Welcome to Not Without Coffee with Glenn Mathis for the coffee connoisseur who wants to know more about their cup of ambition. Join Glenn as he uncovers some fun facts about coffee and coffee history, his own storied past with this bean brew, and some new coffee trends on the horizon. Glenn has his cup. It's time to grab yours and start this episode. Not Without Coffee. Here's Glenn. Hey, fellow coffee lovers, welcome back. How was your holidays? Uh, the New Year's is just a day away. Winter has started. Great coffee weather. Welcome back. Glad to have you back. Where we talk about nothing but coffee. Not coffee and work, not coffee and politics, not coffee and sports, but coffee and coffee-related topics only. And today is of this recording, December 21st, and I apologize, I didn't do any recording before, but they were the holidays, and I had to get a few things, you know, taken care of. Gifts, Christmas dinners, parties, I hope your holidays went well, and I hope your work week went well. Now this is far the most incredible season for hot coffee, that is winter. A one great way to warm up is to have a fresh roasted of hot java. Now, on this particular podcast, I'm going to go over how coffee is made literally from ground to harvest to the liquid, the brown or black liquid that ends up in your cup. Every step and process through the way. Going to try and make it exciting, not boring. But at the same time, remember, we are about relaxing. I'm not going to be over dramatic or in your ear yelling. Uh, we're about in that zone. I got a coffee in hand. Our feet are propped up. Maybe a little soft music in the background. Of course, the coffee candles. We got to set the mood and create that zone. And as usual, we get started with three deep inhale and exhale breaths to get us relaxed. We're in that zone. Make sure the kids are away. No traffic, no drama. You're at home. And they know to leave you alone during this certain time period, you so to speak, that we have our coffee. Let's get started with breath number one. Oh, yes. Breath number two, inhale, and exhale through the mouth. And we're going to get started with breath number three, inhale, and exhale, breath through the mouth. Ah, boy. We ought to do a fourth one because we had, the holidays are over. I mean, all the gifts and prizes we had to pay back. And another thing also that's out there, a new variant of COVID as we speak is out there. And we need a way to... Unwind to stress-free. I know even for just a few minutes per week, I want to try and provide that for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, coffee beans are actually the seeds of the cherry plant, the coffee plant. And then the coffee is produced mainly during the rain season because rain helps soften the soil. And also it's easy for planting and the roots to actually spread quickly. It only grows in tropical areas, usually within a thousand miles of the equator. My guess would be because of the heavy rainfall in that particular area, and it's mostly tropics. The plants grow cherries, the seeds in them, which is eventually harvest, and normally they're hand-picked. Now, there are some machines that actually pick the cherries off the actual plant. The cherries are seeded, and the seeds are sorted. Fellow Java lover, have you ever seen a coffee grove before? Now, I did on my trip to Jamaica once, I actually saw some coffee plants in the Jamaica Blue Mountain area. Really neat. If you ever get a chance, you ought to go check that out. The coffee plant has a span of 7 to 20 years. The actual coffee bean goes through a process called fermentation. Now, this involves in a large, either wooden or concrete tank, and it takes sometimes hours to even days. Usually, they're put in there to dry out, so to speak. Now, this is also done for the seeds to actually draw some of the sugar from the cherry and the pulp. And the reason why they is done that is to get it kind of a sweet flavor to the actual bean. The seeds are, sometimes the seeds are actually not even shelled, but the actual cherry is dried out in the sun. Now, actually, this takes weeks instead of hours and days. And this is done mainly because it enhances the flavor, which also makes a more expensive cup of coffee. Now, then... There is a machine that actually seeds the dried out cherries. You see how really extensive this process is? It's really, really in-depth and really intense also. And that 
creates a more intense flavor. Again, a more costly cup of coffee, too. The machine holds the seeds from the cherries, and then the seeds are dried out in the sun for a couple of days, and they're bagged and shipped to around the world. Now, Brazil being the largest supplier at 2.6 million tons of coffee beans per year. That's a lot of coffee. It's probably their number one export. The stores or the cafes get these bags and they roast them or dark, dark, even a strong brew to get a more bold, flavorful taste. Hey, next time you go to your grocery store, check out the coffee aisle. I know the one that I go to, coffee literally has its own aisle. They even have grinders to where you can grind your own coffee up to have a refined you want it. The whole process of coffee going from ground the seed ground to in your cup is really amazing and it's shipped and it doesn't seem to ever run out. The one good thing also with coffee is it's never out of trend or out of style, so to speak. Now I'm going to go into the coffee hack that I found on Pinterest. And I really love that place for coffee hacks. And this coffee hack is, have you ever run out of coffee filters? Now, the amazing thing is you can actually use paper towels or a napkin to replace of a coffee filter. I have tried this and it works really good. Now, I don't do it all the time because I still use the filters, but it is an incredible hack. I recommend you do an incredible hack. I definitely recommend that you try it. And now for that bonus I promised you earlier, coffee makes a great pre-workout drink. Instead of using a lot of sugar, use cinnamon to sweeten it. It is designed to give you to be better than most energy drinks out there, as long as you don't over-sweeten it now. Now, I do this before all my workouts, and I simply love it. It works amazing. I keep it natural. Do me a favor. Try this and email me your opinion on it. You can contact me at the website at www.notwithoutcoffee.com. My email address is on there. Feel free to email me your opinions, your thoughts, or if you see any improvement or anything you want to go over, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Fellow coffee lover, I've come to the end of another great podcast. I want to thank you for tuning in as always, and happy holidays, and I hope you start the new year great. Looking forward to spending time or talking to you, getting you more coffee hacks, coffee-related stories, and also to help you unwind and relax. That is the goal here, to improve, bring quality in your life, and a little relaxation. I want to thank you for tuning in. You enjoy the rest of your work week. Take care. Fellow coffee lover, thanks for listening. Be sure to tune in every Saturday morning, Central USA. Also, sharing is caring. So tell a fellow coffee lover about your new hangout. To contact us, just go to our website, www.notwithoutcoffee.com. Take care and remember to always keep brewing.